today. So head on down to the cafeteria to grab yourself a hot slice. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Special Containment Podcast. My name is The Volgan. I have a YouTube channel that deals with SCPs. My name is Jeremiah Samarian. I also have a YouTube channel that deals with SCPs and writing advice. Also, I'm an author on the SCP Wiki, with about 100 articles. I'm uh, Jake of Forlorn Foundry. I'm uh, the resident writer. That's my dog. Say hi to him. Yeah, we do videos. We do adaptions, as well as original SCP works. And I'm James. I direct, edit, and sometimes shoot, sadly, for Full On Foundry. Um, and we do live action adaptations. Nudge, nudge. Why is it sad? Why is it sad? Yeah, why is it sad that you're shooting him? Because I don't want to shoot. Oh. I want a crew. Well, you put know? the gun away. I don't want to shoot. Put it down, I want James. to sing. <laughs> I never wanted to be a soldier. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't hate it. It's just, you know, it's nice when you have like a real crew. Like Doorman, I feel like it shows so well. Or one of our newer videos that like when we have an actual cameraman, it's like, wow, this looks nice. Hmm. Yeah, it feels good when we're not in someone's basement just recording an actor saying lines or something. Last, last, last one, year. yeah. Well, you'd hit my That job. was exciting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah, isn't that pretty much all we do? Yep. <laughs> it definitely is all we do. <laughs> it's the only thing I do is record audio from, like, the worst actor ever. <laughs> now I feel like a spoiled child. Eh. Spoiled child, yeah. You guys have a harder job than me, so... Yeah, yeah you've got, like, the whole gamut of media you've got to throw together. We just have to handle the audio and a little bit of visuals. That's actually something that uh, I think we're going to get to a little bit later, talking about what exactly goes into each of our videos. But uh, for now, I think we should maybe talk about what this podcast is about. What is a uh, special containment podcast about? Yes, it's special. Con that's, what we were, special that's what was chosen yeah. by the voters. By you, yeah, the democracy. people. If you don't like it, complain to them. Complain um, to yourself, yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't remember who came up with the idea. But basically, someone had the idea of doing like a guest-based SCP podcast. So that's basically what we want to do here, where we bring on different creators, different writers, anyone who basically contributes to the SCP community and bring them on as a guest and get to know them. You know, the, the face behind the mask. Hmm. I can tell you who came up with the idea, because I remember. Uh, the Exploring Series. Yeah, he's like, oh. when's the podcast? And... Then we're like, what? Oh, podcast, sure. And then we uh, we talked about it. We fleshed it out. Yeah, Got uh, nice some episode. ideas for that. Who's our absent founding member, yeah? Yeah, our founding father. Who, uh... Yeah. He's the Ben Franklin of uh, our podcast. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I'm sorry, every time someone mentions Ben Franklin now, I remember that I wrote an SCP about his penis being magical and wish-granting. Oh, Wait, boy. What? And, what? And, and also a rocket. Um, it's complicated. It's okay. complicated. All right. That definitely sounds complicated. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, the, uh, it, yeah, it, it's just, I saw the, the title was Poor Richard, and I just wanted to make something about Benjamin Franklin's penis, so that, here we are. <laughs> this is, this is like a straight SCP article? Or is yeah, it no, it's a, no, it's a main yeah. lister. It's about, uh, Benjamin Franklin's, uh, magical wish granting penis. That's, uh, literally what happens. And then, the Chaos Insurgency wants to overthrow the U.S. government, so they resurrect all the Founding Fathers. Benjamin Franklin shows up, and turns out they're all anomalous some way, so they immediately escape. And Benjamin Franklin goes and finds his penis in Foundation custody and uses so it that, that as a rocket. That sounds like and the worst off. version of Endgame ever. Instead of an Infinity Gauntlet, it's Benjamin Franklin <laughs> it's oh wish Lord. granting penis. <laughs> That's the MacGuffin of the yeah. movie. You have to, treasure Endgame. Anyone, anyone who grabs it gets their it. wishes granted, yeah. <laughs> they just they grab it they get their wishes granted and he says to it uh, get me out of here so it turns into a rocket and launches him into orbit <laughs> does nick is nick cage involved in some capacity no, no. yes Damn. i don't know maybe <laughs> it's a it short article i mean it doesn't have it's not it's not exactly a complex concept 
I mean, it is yeah, pretty, complicated, pretty complex, but... Though. You didn't go into the mechanics? They didn't experiment on it? They didn't, uh... <laughs> they didn't get much of an opportunity to before Benjamin Franklin took his penis back, so... <laughs> No, also, that's, no, that's, that's a sentence I never it. thought I'd hear. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was fine until Benjamin, Benjamin got his penis, took back. his penis back. Too. Uh, yeah. Is that what the new uh, Game of Thrones sequel is about? <laughs> How the end got his dick back? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess spoiler. <laughs> spoiler. Wow, spoiler. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, that, that happened. That happened like three years ago. People More still get livid man. over uh, spoilers for like six cents or whatever, or just I'm if sorry, it's been out for you. like a year, you should probably. That's your, that's your fault. Maybe. You fucked up. Yeah, especially if it's like a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, like no, I'm sorry. You you have a right to be angry at certain. I don't even particularly. I, care I would about say in the first all. week. I was in the first weeks, reasonable, but after a week, it if, if you media, haven't watched it, I you think. don't care. TV shows. If it's a TV I show, think, I think a week's about. cutthroat. For films? For I think films, it's different. It depends on the media. So, like, I, see, I'm thinking differently. I think for a film about a week and for a and for a uh, television series, probably about two days, and that's about it. So, I mean, if you I don't watch... I see stuff opening week, so I'd be fucked. Yeah, so... I don't, then again, I come at this from the perspective of I don't understand people who don't want to see spoilers on stuff. Like, I get that it exists. I understand that it exists, and I can respect that it exists, but I don't get it. Like... Anytime I consume a, me a piece of media, I want to know what happens before I watch and or read yeah. and or listen to it. So I, that's well, what I'm like as well. I just I have to like I knew about Endgame before I watched it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And that's the that's the way I've always been. And like I explained this to people uh, a couple of days ago on a discord server and they were like, what's wrong with you? Are you mentally? They literally literally a guy asked me if I was mentally ill. And I'm like, no, I just think differently than you. You understand how that works, right? <laughs> huh? What's that? I like knowing as little as possible. Yeah, James and I are like yeah. shaking hearing you talk about this because like as people working in like <laughs> in like narrative kind of uh, like film related <laughs> stuff and all that, it's uh, it's particularly, you know, you have these things set up. It, they're supposed to be reveals and oh, just know, hearing yeah. it like laid out in the list like Oh, so and so does this. Uh, Ant Man crawls into or whatever. You know that's gonna. Yeah. That just. Oh no, I uh, get it. You're I, like I would never spoil. I would never intentionally spoil something for somebody because that's kind of a dick move. Yeah. But I like you yeah, know just I because I don't it. mind it doesn't mean others might not. Yeah, that's why I let off with making that uh, d that differentiation is that I get it. I understand that other people. Well, I don't get it, but I understand that other people feel a particular way about it. So. Well, I think. My favorite way to fight spoilers is just making up bullshit spoilers. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of that. With does that fight this, it? This, this, yeah. So, I mean, I have a perfect example. My sister was um, and I'm watching some video that mentioned oh the game. And someone in the comments was like, sorry, guys, but the reason why everyone has so many issues with this movie is because Thanos converts to Islam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and straight face, he's like, James, is this true? And I'm like, damn, I'm sorry. That, that was literally like the big reveal. <laughs> and straight face to lead that shit until like I went over Jake's later and she's like guys James ruined Endgame for me <laughs> wait she asked you hold on uh, that's yeah. bullshit right there that, that, that no that, it's that... not no 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 if, if someone asks you spoil this for me and then you give them the like I have that happen a lot no no, no she read she read the comment already and she's like is this real well she asked you is it real it's not your fault yeah I mean it is my fault because I lied to her but you know yeah, 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 but that that was just for the funds. Oh yeah, speaking of which, actually, just because this is the first episode, uh, let's just get this question out of the way: Is SCP real? Yeah. Uh, no. Oh. Good. no. Did somebody say yeah? <laughs> Who said yeah? <laughs> Look your ass. I live on a compound. I'm not afraid of them. I'll come out here and just say it, okay, guys? Jake's the podcast's resident meme Alaska. lord. He wanted the, this podcast Literally. to be called the Super Cool Podcast, among others. I actually kind of wanted that too. That's See, I know you See did. it's just it's a smart choice. That'll be the hyphen uh, name, <laughs> you know, like in brackets or something. Uh, <laughs> I will forever yeah. struggle to actually say the name of the podcast because I'm always thinking, "Oh, this is a super cool podcast, guys." <laughs> the podcast in your mind, is called it will always be the super the cool special podcast. special containment podcast, but we're called the super cool people. How's that for a super oh, yeah. cool people? There we go. SPP. P <laughs> PP what? No, no, that ain't it. 
that's super cool people. Oh wait, fuck, I fucked that up. Okay. I think that's yeah, a pretty yeah, good compromise. <laughs> Hi, welcome We're to the, the Special Containment podcast, podcast, people. And here are the super cool people. <laughs> the super cool people. Nice. Alright. It's totally not circle jerking ourselves. Um, no, I'm okay next question. That. Next qu- There was a question? Oh, there was. Yeah. yeah. Hey, let's do some questions. Questions. That is great. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, we'll start with the most basic question of all. How did everyone here get into SCP? Where'd you hear about it? Why? Why are you still here? I got into it originally from uh, the TV Tropes website. I just was... You know how you... I don't know if other people do this. I know that other people do it. I don't know how many of the other people listening do. But you, you sometimes you just get on the site and you just start surfing and you start clicking through to this and clicking through to that. And I was kept yeah. seeing entries on other on trope sites about like the SCP wiki and web original. And I was like, what is this? I was back in 2012 and I started, I I went to the site then signed up, wrote a terrible, terrible article, uh, which died very quickly. And then, um, the people who were around at the time told me that I was no fucking way I would ever be a good writer on the site. And I just kind of said, well, fuck you guys and left. And then in 2014, I was watching a Marky, Pl- Marky, Markiplier, Marky, uh, Marky, <laughs> watching a Markiplier Let's Play, and he was playing uh, SCP Containment Breach, and I downloaded the game, played it a little, and then got back into the community, and wrote a hundred SCP articles. A hundred in one day? Well, in a, yeah, all in one day. <laughs> wow. Now, like over the last five years or so, I've gotten up to I think I'm at not well. 95 total articles that includes tales and scps so So what's the cutoff for when you call whenever you call an author uh, a veteran author is it 100 uh no because i'm the ninth most prolific author on the site so that would be only considering uh, one through eight would be a veteran and everybody else on the site but there's like 1500 (laughs) other authors would just be uh, no you guys are news so is it number of articles written or is it time spent on the site i'd say after 20 I'd say, any well, it's complex, sort of. Like, respect comes from not just the number of articles you have, but also maybe the, quality the of perceived yeah. quality of them. So, mm-hmm. And that's not even necessarily upvotes, but literally the perceived quality of them from just people's personal opinion. So. Yeah, true. I'm just thinking of, like, a Thunderdome with SCP authors and them fighting to see who's <laughs> the most veteran. <laughs> yeah, I'm the ninth most prolific, and the tenth most prolific has 88. So the top ten is starts at 88 articles, and it goes up from there to Rajit at probably like 250. So, well, damn, yeah, it it, it scales it's, up it, quickly. Cactus has to be number one, right? No, he's not. He's uh, really? number. I think Good he's number Lord. seven or six, maybe. Let me look at the list real quick. Huh. Funny, because I feel like I hear his name the most out of authors. He's the he's the one he's the one on the site that has the highest average. I'll tell you, or at least the, uh, I should say the highest average amongst people who have a hundred or more articles. I gotcha. I gotcha. Like his his stuff is much more highly rated than almost. And the funny part I should mention is that he deletes self deletes a lot of stuff that other people would consider wildly successful. Like I, I've seen him. I shouldn't say I've seen him, but I've heard about him self deleting stuff that didn't reach a plus one hundred in like a week. Oh my! So, Fucking hell! I might be over, might be overstating that a little bit, but he's definitely self-deleted stuff that other people would have definitely kept and been very proud to have at a certain level. Yeah, his average mm-hmm. is. Let me see here. Over 118 articles. His average is 233. Woo! Right. Damn! Someone mm-hmm. should like yeah. steal his computer hardware and restore all those. And I would imagine, considering I'm looking at these numbers here, he's probably got the highest total rating too because. Everybody above him on the list, in by total number of articles, has a lower number than him. I would imagine somebody further down the list would have something higher, because even Rajat at 246, which is more than double, a little bit double his num- article count, is still only got 22,000 as a total rating. His average is 90, and DJ Cactus's total is 27.5 thousand. So, damn, huh. it's a fight. Yeah. Um... Anyways, who's next? What, you don't I'll think the statistics are interesting to our listeners? 
for a bit. Yeah, I just no. need to wake myself it's up the, here. Uh, wake up. Okay. <clears throat> um. Yeah, my my uh, my story of getting into the SCP Foundation is not as interesting. Um, I actually found a YouTube video that got linked to me by someone that I played Team Fortress Two with in 2011. And it was a video about SCP-173. It was like an animation, like a really quick animation called the sculpture. Um, but it was, it was in combination with the, the subject matter because uh, 173 is a lot of people's introduction to the SCP wiki. But it was also the animation was kind of weird, like the style was kind of weird, which made it even better. But as soon as I found out that there was more of them. I went to the site and just clicked random and spent about a week just reading, like, literally random SCPs. But at that stage, it was only Series 1. There, I mean, there was still a lot to choose from. Like, at, the, at that time, I looked at it and I was like, geez, there's a thousand of these things? Who writes these? But, um, yeah, that was, that was my introduction to it. Was hooked ever since. And... Uh, by the way, this was before Containment Breach as well. So I, I think if you got into SCP before yeah. Containment Breach, you probably started on the wiki, as opposed to Containment Breach, was, which is a very common entry point because of how popular Containment Breach was back then. But yeah, that's me. When did when did Breach come out? I think it was, oh, it was 2013, 2013 right? Yeah, like, like, okay. like the so alpha I'm, came out in I'm 2013, pretty, I think. Uh, I'm pre-containment breach then. I actually really specifically remember the day, not that I got into SCP, not because of SCP, but so, so my friend who will not be named, uh, he like, at the time when we were in high school, would like talk to a lot of hackers and shit. Um, and he figured out like Tor and all that crap and like decided to show me the Silk Road. Um, and if you guys don't know what the Silk Road is, it's basically this like illegal, James uh, Loki buying drugs that, like, with Bitcoin. Like don't go looking yeah, for it, yeah, yeah. Or to our viewers, don't go looking. That's no, no. Don't, don't go looking. You, you can't just look it up and find it. It's like very complex. But anyway, he ends up showing me this, and I'm like, what the fuck? So he's already set in this mood of like this strange underworld. And then he's like, hey, you want to check this thing out? And he shows me the SCP wiki. And like for half oh. a sec, I thought it was like another like weird creepy thing that's the coolest um, intro to the scp I, I wiki home. i've ever heard yeah yeah <laughs> so you know so thank is you. it is you the scp wiki real <laughs> to james uh, it for is half a second yeah, <laughs> yeah dude I, I seen it i seen it on the silk road dude i was on the dark <laughs> web well i think he did pull up through tour so that's why i was like oh shit yeah well, yeah, I bet if, your friend probably thought it was real. If somebody showed so he's like, that to be me careful. through Tor, no, no, he didn't, I, would, he didn't. I would understand completely why people think it's real if you could access it only through Tor, because that would be f terrifying. Yeah. God, they should include that. That should be like a thing. It's time yeah. to make a new <laughs> spinoff. Oh, shit, yeah. That would be cool. Great. SCP-2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's, that's how and then uh, I kind of forgot about it for a while to be honest and then near the end of college is when I started to get into it again mm -hmm. so what about you Jake uh, mine is a, a bit boring um, I was browsing a certain paranormal section of a website and uh, I just stumbled upon it and was reading a bunch of them I just binged mm -hmm. a ton in like one night and uh, I'm like this is so good I'm gonna go write something and I did, and it was decimated. Uh, and then I'm like, I hate these guys. And then I just didn't look at it for a few years. Kind of similar stories here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just ended up finding it occasionally. You know, checking in once in a while to see what's up. And uh, as games were coming out, I would revisit it and be like, oh, what's this? What's this? Why does this game look like crap? Or whatever. And yeah, then same time, I guess, with James... Uh, towards the end of college looking into it and getting back into it yeah i think you just called my story boring how dare you oh no oh no because you said your story was boring and you're you're like and it's very similar to other people so i think you're projecting your uh how dare you <laughs> oh yeah by the way i just double checked the the containment breach release date is apparently the 15th of april 2012 damn that's earlier than i thought it was huh. and, and is again, that the first like beta of it or I think That's that it has release. to be the alpha. 
Because it was in alpha for a long time before. Because it was about three years ago that it became, you know, 1.0, you know. It didn't hit viral popularity until, like, a little bit later when they started getting picked yeah, up it on was YouTube. Markiplier, PewDiePie uh, picked it up, and that's whenever it became, like, meteoric in success. Yeah. And then the site... <laughs> And then the site people complain constantly that it brings people in to the site, even though that's sort of the point of a website. So let's initiate uh, Operation PewDiePie. We make sure he uh, finds out about all our YouTube channels. Oh, I thought yeah. you were going to say something about a bridge, and we'd have to say a certain word. Never mind. Yeah. We're good. Well, that's Don't worry a deep about cut. it. Don't worry about it. It's not that deep, but it's it's beyond the scope of this podcast. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, no, I, yeah, 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 yeah. No. I heard oh. PewDiePie, and my head, like, shot up. I'm like, huh? All right. I, yeah. Um, we've got another question for everyone. What's that? If you'd like to hear it, perhaps. No, uh, okay. Hear it. Okay. Well, then, uh, that was a great podcast, everyone. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Okay. Let's, um, Let's go home. <laughs> what, uh, what got each of you into your particular field, more or less? So, you know, what did you guys do? How'd you get here? Um... When you say field, what do you mean exactly? Like, well, for you, I suppose it would be writing and then making making videos based on the writing. Uh, what got me into writing? Well, I've always been I've always considered myself to be a writer, even when I was terrible at it. That goes all the way back to when I was in, still in high school. So, I guess I just saw an opportunity and took it. Like I, I say this over and over again. There's a lot of people in the SCP wiki that'll tell you that the uh, SCP wiki has these incredibly high standards and it's very difficult to get anything to survive there. But really, they just have standards. So at some point you can like, once you, I said, I always tell people, once you hit that level of mediocrity, you can kind of succeed there. So I hit the level of mediocrity and was like, I can do this for forever. Hmm. Fair enough. And uh, I can yeah, do this so all day. Now, so now I'm just, and then I decided to make videos to try and give people advice to get them to at least that far. I, I think I started with, let's see, I started with a podcast, which was like a lore deep dives. And then I put them up on my U on a YouTube channel because that's kind of an easy way to deliver content, I guess. Hold on, was that and whenever you started out and you were the official SCP podcast? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't technically. This was oh back when I was staff, uh, and I did create the channel originally as kind of a testing bed to see if we could have an official uh, SCP channel yeah uh but it was never it was never truly official it was just kind of like i said it was testing bit and uh over time it became my channel because the, the rest of scp staff are not exactly well known for uh venturing out to new endeavors they kind of just stick to the the old orthodoxy and do whatever they're currently doing over and over again for forever danger yeah. danger so <laughs> <laughs> So uh, it was like it, nobody, nobody else created content for it. That was the original idea because it was like, I'm going to create this thing and we're going to, you know, us as because there are other people who can do voice stuff. There are other people who can do video and art and stuff like that. I was like, we'll put it together and we'll have and I was the only one doing it. So then it was just my channel. So I just continued to use it. And eventually I evolved out of that because I did a I did a writing advice video uh, based on it was one of the podcasts. And it got picked up by Volgan, who promoted it on oh, one of his... Right. Uh, yeah, I love that video. Yeah, one of his things. And uh, from that point on, I just started doing writing advice stuff. And then I've kind of developed since then based on what came, what became popular and what hasn't. You know, chasing trends, I guess, is the best way to put it. Yeah, your content has really um, diversified since then. You do a lot. Which I don't know if that's a good thing, but it definitely is a good diversification. Thing. Just means that people, I feel like it means that people are, are not going to know what they're. I, I, they know what they because it's a consistent schedule on the same days, so mm. they do know what they're going to get. But still, I think some people come for certain types of content, and some people come for other kinds of content. I think most oh, yeah. of my paying Patreon patrons are uh, the people who come for writing advice videos, but the vast mm. majority of my subscribers come for the other content. So it's kind of a weird mix pretty good to have a mix of um different styles though yeah. it's a balance between having a mix but also not just jumping into something that's completely uh tangential to what you normally do if you just yeah, wildly definitely. change everything then fans start panicking they start shaking and crying 
Yeah. You would yeah. never do this. I'm shaking and crying. Yeah. I'm literally screaming right now. Yeah, they, they do that. Very sad. That's yeah, I, l I learned the real. hard way with that. All the time. Oh, did you? <laughs> this well, feel, uh, that sounds like a story. Now you have to tell it. Well, okay. okay. Um, so before before I had my YouTube channel, like I, I've always been like the guy that does accents all the time. Like even back whenever I was a kid, I was really good at doing accents. So whenever I started playing TF2, I was always on voice chat making people laugh doing funny accents right so through that people always used to send me like funny copy pastas to read and, and silly voices so i had an original youtube channel that's now deleted where i posted um it, it, you know those copy pastas that are intentionally badly written like with horrible grammar oh, yeah. and stuff yes um i did yeah, a version of that yeah, pretty much that style, yeah. I did a version, it was called Grand Theft Auto 5, Nico Dies, it's, <laughs> it was called. Um, and I I did a version of that that got, at the time, it got like 6,000 views. Um, and actually, no, that was on SoundCloud. Jeez, I sound like a geriatric. Uh, but yeah, that, that was on SoundCloud. <laughs> um, hey, I still use SoundCloud, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, but um, when's the, so that uh, when's got 6,000 views. And that was... <sighs> it's already dropped, Jake. But um, oh, whenever whenever that hit, I was like, oh, m maybe I could do something. But I I could never find a website that had stuff I could legally read. So whenever I found the SCP wiki, I was like, oh yeah, I'm kind of an edgy dude. I I, I can read horror stuff. I I would enjoy that. <laughs> so whenever I found the tale behind the scenes about like a murder clown who was talking to somebody before. He killed them. I was like, yeah, I could do that. I don't know why I gave him an English accent, but at the time it made sense. Not now, though. So that, that's how I got into doing audio recordings of stuff. Um, hmm. But to get, to get back to the story that I, that I originally told. So when it, in 2012, whenever I started making SCP content, it like I, I experienced at the time, which was like a boost of... Um, kind of popularity because the SCP wiki actually s shared my first ever video on the front page of the SCP wiki. So for the first couple of months, I was just churning out video upon video because YouTube fame, whenever you first get it, is kind of intoxicating in a way because you're like, oh my god, people actually give a shit about what I'm putting out and they're watching it. Like, I'm getting like 500 views a video. This is insane because before that I was getting maybe five in the first year you know like so about a year went on and i was <laughs> i did nothing but scp but then i st my mind started to wonder and i was like i wonder if i could start doing those those copy pasta reads again so i read the navy seal copy pasta <laughs> and i it it was actually before i oh like a year ago that was like one of my most popular videos but i learned the hard way not to do that because people subscribe to my channel for scp content so whenever i uploaded the navy seal copy pasta i had a lot of annoyed subscribers at that time <laughs> so that that's why i don't do anything but scp on my channel anymore um and i would bet that the people who subscribed for that video were also then were also extremely confused yep yep it, it, it's bad for everyone when you drastically change what you what style of content you create because, but as I said, that that copy pasta, the Navy Seal one, I got a lot of subscribers through that. About so at the time, I had about fifteen k subs, and about five thousand of them were Navy Seal copy pasta fans. <laughs> so whenever I uploaded yeah. a, a an yeah. SCP video, then they were like, "What? What is this, man? Like this isn't funny. This is just edgy shit." So, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I had I something the similar with my channel too. Because when uh, the video that blew up was "You're Wrong About D Class," so that's why I started the "You're Wrong About" series. But mm. it's one of those things. Is like I had 20, 2,300 subscribers before that it blew up, and then afterwards I had about eight thousand. So I knew immediately what kind of content I needed to continue to make to keep those yeah. people around. 
Well, I can say many times me and Jake thought a video we were going to release would piss off people, but thankfully didn't. Like the mystery box, now vending one. But it's not, it's not even a minute. It's like the shortest, like, video. I'm not going to spoil it for people if they want to watch it. But we were, like, shocked that, like, no one was like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, everyone was like, ha. I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah they would have been that, pissed if we did what we originally planned for April. Like, yeah, many would, series. Yeah. But, like, oh, at, really? at the start, yeah, yeah. it was it was something that took... It took me a while to come around to it. Like, the first two episodes, I was like, maybe this is good. But after that, it was, it's, like, my favorite. <laughs> Don't ask me why, because it's like... What, what won you over? Yeah, well, yeah, it won me over, yeah. Also, the actors that you get oh, it, for the for the episodes are, are, are really good too. I I, I, I could see, yeah I could yeah. see them as like you know a buddy cop movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's basically, yeah. God, there needs to be a foundation buddy cop movie with two. Oh hell yeah, with Max in the with Max Lombardi and uh, Agent Barnes. I would love that. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Next script. <laughs> hell yeah. Um, I like that you're like, well, let's make it happen. I'm writing down like the notes and furiously. That's the thing. If if you posit an idea to a filmmaker, the first thing they're going to say is, hmm, I could make that. That's what I do with writing. It's exactly what I do with my writing. When everyone was like, oh, man, that should totally be an X. I would be like, well, I, don't know, I could just <laughs> write that right now if I wanted to. Yeah, but see, if you're a filmmaker get, or like, a writer, that's, that's impressive. But if I go, I can read that. It's not as impressive. <laughs> I can read that. Yes, I can. Hey, I, I can, can read that. that. If someone, if someone else wrote that, I could read that. <laughs> that's that's the entire ethos of my YouTube channel. <laughs> I mean, hey, you do some nice graphic work. Well, yeah. yeah. I think you definitely yeah. are the sleekest. I know you meant that as like a compliment, but it sounded so low key. You're like, yeah. well, yeah, but you also do some good graphic you do, work. You do other things too, oh, yeah. buddy. That's the reason people watch. You do other things. I, I like the the videotape on the table that spins. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, right? I feel like your recent stuff has. Not no, happened. I just have a monitor now. Well, that's why <laughs> yeah. I stopped watching. No. Huh? <laughs> 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 Uh, Either the monitor uh, goes I or I go. <laughs> I mean, the uh, you talking about how like filmmakers can just be like, "Oh, let's do it." It's like kind of part of the reason how I got into like wanting to get into film. Originally, I was like really into like science and like biology, so I was like, "Oh, maybe we'll get into research." Hmm. But then, um, one of my uh, ex friends from high school <laughs> uh, got me into film by like <laughs> used to God. Be, like, there's a uh, story there, isn't there? Man, oh, let's boy, not start I'm like not sniping at what people is this we don't drama like. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. It was also our yeah, uh, no. first foray into uh, having a a big video. Yes, well, I'll get to that. Are later. we it's actually going to get to that later? Well, no, not. Uh, yeah, that's that's, and then uh, then went out like literally like a year and a half ago. Uh, I was over at Jake's house, and I was kind of like, oh, I, you know, I want to do something. I'm graduating soon. Um, like, oh, we should do a YouTube channel. I was, like, doing, like, oh, maybe we should do, like, the goat man story or whatever. Because that's, like, one of my favorite creepypastas. And then Jake brought up, like, why don't we do, like, SCP adaptations? James, I'm going to stop you right there. Because you Go lied. We were at your house. I lied? Shit. No. That changes everything. Really? We were at your house sitting on your stupid couch. Yeah, and then we pulled out the laptop. Fuck, and my memories are so fucked. Yeah, you're, you got against this couch. That's what I, I was about had, to say. That's gotta, some you know? hostility nah. towards a couch. Listen, <laughs> listen. I, 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 I say this because I'm like spotted every time. But like, what's the story there? What did the couch okay. do to you? <laughs> All right, look, the couch is okay. I just uh, I got a little heated there for a moment. I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, we can actually kind of, I guess, combine our stories on this one because we both got into. Uh, making scp stuff in the same way it was mm. again that conversation on the couch not a casting couch but just a couch and uh <laughs> we were just pretty much like he wanted to do no, judgment. <laughs> no, no judging here uh you yeah like you said james you were looking to do like let's do goat man let's adapt that and you can certainly do that sure absolutely i was thinking more of like a continuous thing so then it was like ideas of that like what can we do and then i, I brought up scp because i'm like hey I don't really know exactly what's the legality behind it, but I know that there's a few thousand stories that could potentially be told. 
And we're both like, mm, it probably has been done before anyway. So then we look, and uh, nope. it hadn't been done before. No live action uh, SCP series existed. There were animation ones. We both really liked Lord Bung's work. Yeah. But beyond that, there wasn't like a consistent thing, let alone an, a live action one. And we're like, all right, well, let's do it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I feel like Bung made it feel like, oh, this is possible. Like people will actually watch this. Likewise. Because yeah, a lot of my, my concern. Oh, yeah. So I guess, you know, thanks, Bung. But uh, my concern was just like a lot of narrative shit does horribly on YouTube. Mm. Um especially like series yeah because to be fair there was live action scp content on youtube at the time it's just super like hard to find because it wasn't hitting yeah I, th I think what i interpreted uh jake meaning was like there was no regular uh live action yeah there content. was no series that was like yeah. continually going on there was plenty of like little fan videos there yeah, were one some larger yeah. ones but it, it was never like a continuous sort of series, and we realized like this is perfectly formatted for an anthology thing, where yeah. we just show a different, we have a different feeling for each episode. The, the the wiki is so varied, and there's so many different types of SCPs that it made sense to portray them as varied and do all that. We weren't going to keep to a certain theme. We're just going to mm -hmm. show them as best as we can, as best as we can adapt it. Yeah. Well, that's also how like you were mentioning earlier, being trapped by like one style. That's how we're trying to avoid that. So technically everything's SCP, but like, you know, like our video that we're releasing today is like a noir artsy kind of video, which is like nothing like our past videos. Mm. So we're trying to constantly keep changing the styles. So that is our style. Yeah, definitely. We don't get boxed in, but you know, I'm sure eventually we'll get snapped at. Although, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that makes it more, more f um, sustainable in the long run because you're less likely to get, you know, stagnant and bored with the content that you're making, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah about your burnout. Absolutely. That's yeah. I, I, that's something I definitely think about a lot, because that literally kills channels. Yeah, man. Definitely. I mean, that's like Volgan. I'm, I'm amazed how long you've been doing this. I mean, like, have you had any sort of burnout? Oh yeah, big time at the at the start of this year. Um, because that's mainly one of the reasons why. Because I used to make you know four videos a week. Um, because I was trying to. Mm -hmm you know, grow my channel back then. But at th at this point in time, I'm I'm starting to scale it up again, but I needed to take quite a long break because I just didn't want to do it at the start of this year. And that's a bad sign <laughs> if you don't want to do something. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had to take a little bit of a, a hiatus kind of, but, but I mean, I actually did. So I started my channel in 2012 and I made videos semi regularly for about two years. But then I left for two years and I, like, I still uploaded the occasional video, like, once every couple of months. But, um, it was at the end of 2017 whenever I, like, resurrected my channel again. Cause at, at that stage, I had 30,000 subscribers and, probably a thousand regular viewers that you know because most of my subs at that time had completely forgotten uh, that i was yeah. a that i was a thing so and not everybody's like john tron that they can go away for 50 years and come back and <laughs> get instant five million views so he's an anomaly he really is at best really is yeah i mean he, he's kind of weird because i think he does a lot of actual professional film work so I think he also has a lot of industry connections. And stuff. Oh, he has to. I mean, he has He's he has editors, guys. and he. I think he has a production company as well. Like he, for sure. He's a, yeah. he's a machine, that guy. Uh, so let's start Operation Jontron. Get Jontron in our videos because we <laughs> both live in New York. Guys, let's let's please stop saying Jontron. Let's not. Uh, there's. Wait, what <laughs> do we need to stop saying? Little uh, little uh, controversial figure these days. Not, Wait, not so much oh, anymore. That's yeah, kind of easy to forget. I don't know anything. About... Has it? I don't know anything really? about this person. So, yeah, that was that seems because he, he just did a public apology and then goes like, okay. oh, "I didn't look at that." Yeah, as far as yeah, I can did tell, a that happened. Public apology and, and like... then left for another year. <laughs> Recently, has started making videos again. Basically. That's a good way to get. That's a good way to get yeah. people to yeah. forget you fucked up. Yep. I felt that just most people, you know, he kept putting the content out, and it's one of those things where people are like, "I separate the person from the content." You know, like, I love Kanye's music, but I'm not gonna, you know, listen to his opinions or whatever. 
I mean, everybody asks Kanye, but some, nobody asks sometimes Kanye. I, 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 I agree with that sometimes, but there's other things that you're like, man, you can separate the content creator from the content to a certain extent, I think. You know, there's, like if, yeah. if you find out I, I, that one of your favorite YouTubers was accused of being a pedophile, you know, could, could you really watch their content if it was proven to be true? I, I don't think a, so. It's a hypothetical, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It wouldn't surprise me. I'll see. I, I think I've heard stuff like that before. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. Let's be clear. That's a hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. let me be clear. Allegedly, um, <laughs> this non-named person. <laughs> allegedly, redacted. By the way, for, for, for the listeners, this isn't directed at anyone. It was just it's just a meme. It's just a meme. <laughs> I know, that's what it sounds though, because you're oh like, god, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, I think for f future uh, episodes, we're going to have to rein it in with the, <laughs> the in-jokes, I think. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no, because that's what people tune in for, man. This is what the people want. This is the, this is what Super Cool Podcast in. is about. At this, at this point in time, nobody oh, knows about this podcast. Confidence. Be confident. <laughs> I didn't get you where did I was well, today a via confidence, Sonny, okay? <laughs> what did you get here for? through then i don't know i'm still trying to figure it out <laughs> that that spinning little thing on his desk that's what got him here yeah Qu <laughs> quick question you did a poll asking what you thought what people thought our uh our, our podcast name should be how many people answered your poll oh god oh i don't actually know what this stage i'll i'll check it was a big chunky amount <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a chunky amount dog <laughs> chunky. hold on i'll Chunky. chunky. That's the good, that's a good word for it. That is it. That is a good chumby. Chumby. I heard. Ch I said chunky, and now you're saying chumby. <laughs> <I know. laughs> um, yeah, that's what I say. Yeah, you at say this chumby. point All in right. time, there's twenty two thousand votes on that. <laughs> yeah. So damn. Yeah. Yeah. We're, this this podcast will not do well at all. Who knows? I mean, God. no one wants this. Look, don't don't jinx this shit. Okay. That's you more. That's that's more than double my total subscriber count. So <laughs> got to knock on that wood. I can't figure it out yeah. though, because on my community posts, like the most I've ever got likes on a community post is four thousand ever in, in in the history of my community tab. But there's twenty two k votes Damn. on that poll. Damn. I don't get it. There's, I think there's someone something did wrong say here. that someone like, was saying somebody was saying that uh, YouTube pushes polls in the yeah, community tab. Yeah, someone was saying that the polls are like content. yeah, they go hard mm. with it. They're like, this is a new feature. Everyone should like it here. And then the the YouTube god just like raises it up. Hmm. Yeah, because I did a poll recently, literally asking how often do you look at this uh, the con this this tab, and it got like a thousand responses, which is almost a tenth of my subscriber base. So I was like, how the fuck did that many people even see it? What I found funny was that about half it was a little bit less than half. It was like less than forty percent, but just barely. That were like, no, we don't look at this tab at all. But that's like four hundred people looked at the tab and answered the poll. Yeah. Do you, I think you really like statistics, Simran. Simran. Numbers are important, goddammit. The numbers, yeah. I live, I live and breathe sure. via upvotes. If so you, I, if you I have like started a YouTube channel and you don't like numbers and statistics, if you've been doing it for a year, you will eat shit and breathe numbers and statistics. <laughs> Trust oh, yeah. me. <laughs> I can't say shit. I literally, I literally check every other week. Right. Like the statistics. Yeah. I'm yeah. like constantly looking at my analytics to understand what the fuck is up. That's a pretty good thing to do, though. Like, I look at analytics every day. Oh, I can't do that. Weird flex. I'm just I like, grow, bitch, grow. <laughs> no, and I'm. I, I look at the. <laughs> I seriously, I look at my analytics at least five to ten times a day, probably. Do, James, I do, do you know what you just said? That that, that that quote, "grow, bitch, grow." I think every person that has a YouTube channel is, <laughs> does that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> fucking grow, grow. Because, like, I mean, like when we get when we had that like when we release painting we got like for some reason the algorithm just snapped that video and sent it everywhere so there was a period where it was like crazy growth every day but then once it started slowing down it was like holding on to a dying dream and then we stabilize now so i like we know what to expect but like for a period that was like that like frantic watching the analytics way too much and i'm like right. all right i, gotta, I like, will say that yeah. this ties into when what is was, this dream uh, going to die yeah well, this was it ties into what was said earlier about um like particularly like like binging a certain type of content like oh this works i need to make more of it uh our 
kind of format prevents us from doing something like that so easily, we can only make these broad sort of like course corrections. So even if we looked at the analytics a lot, we only have the ability to like adjust it twice a month because of our release schedule. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just a lot harder for us to put content out quickly, let alone, you know, like a, a reactionary sort of thing. We can't look, we, we, we still look at the painting and don't know what happened. Like, what can we do? I mean, we're also ahead of schedule too. So yeah. that's like, really take like three months to get like a response or something like that. Yeah, um, you're not able months. to respond in real time, which it's fair. And I understand that. I just was like, for people who, who do, it's it's each channel is different, right? Every Each channel is going to handle their yeah. growth in a different way. And they've got to find their own particular way of doing it. Big time. So I think Bung is the most similar to us in the sense of SCP channels. Because he's the only other one I can think of that does narrative consistently. Oh, he, um, he does narrative like, yeah. like I mean... Like how, how many how system. many but, how many um episodes is there of confinement? Six, I think. Right now? I think but like there's six. But like um his character, Connor, is like everyone wants to know like what because I think that's the next episode that he's gonna be releasing, like the origin of Connor's anomalous mm -hmm. ability. Um, which everybody's looking forward to. But he he like back in the day whenever I resurrected my YouTube channel, it was his series that made me want to do it. Because he he wow, made it Bung, seem Bung is the cool. Source. Yeah, definitely. Bung made this happen, except for Sim. <laughs> you're you're un unique. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty awesome. Super cool. Yeah. Um, sh <laughs> should we wrap this up? How long have we? Um, been? no, we shouldn't. An it's, uh, it's like an hour. It's almost an hour. Okay, cool. Yeah, I haven't been checking. Uh, the time. No, we've still got time for. Yeah, don't I rush it. We're gonna at least push it to it. it pr probably at two is when we should start cutting. Well, we'll see. I think we're going to actually hit a point where it's going to naturally kind of taper off. But uh, I think we could segue from the last conversation. We were talking about kind of the YouTube algorithm and all the magic there and all that. So I think it might make sense to talk about when was the point in your channel's growth? When did it really take off? And when did you realize that what you were doing was something that could be sustainable? Um, well, you know what? I don't know that I have hit that point yet because I'm still at the I'm, I'm the least successful of all of us at uh, 10,000 subscribers so it's like I'm only so when we talk about sustainable we kind of inherently have to talk about money and I don't, I don't think I'm at the point where it's a sustainable like, I could not live off of my YouTube income so mm. same yeah it's like eh, I'm waiting for that for the the moment when that actually hits I don't think I've hit it yet well maybe like, I'll frankly. say more of like kind of the validation when you realize that what you're doing is uh, something that people enjoy and that you you have this you know presence, so we're so, not looking particularly at the money of it, but more of you know your drive to continue and fans continually watching. Right. Um, I have a strongly positive opinion of myself, so it was never a it was never really a point where I was like, oh man, I'm not doing this well enough and I'm gonna fail. It was more like I just need to keep doing this until other people notice how awesome I am. <laughs> Cool. That's a good so, attitude. That's me. It's like anyway. very wholesome. Uh, I mean, for us, it's pretty obvious. Is once painting just fucking balls to the wall when it exploded. Um, but before that, we were like barely getting any sort of views. Um, I mean, for us, when B Bunk commented on our uh, on our first episode, the sterile, and that was like, oh my god, wow. Um, and then for a while, it was kind of like we were getting excited over like getting ten subscribers. Like, I think we got really happy when we hit, like, 200. Um, and then, I think right around when we hit 250 subs is when, um, like, mid-October is when um, painting just blew up. And we got, like, thousands. And um, I think we got, like, 10,000 one month. And it was like, holy shit. We went from, like, 200 to 10,000. And then we're like, okay, but yeah, we, we got to keep this up. I remember when that happened to you guys. Because uh, you were at around 200 or 300-ish, right around the time Jake contacted me and, like, was... Cause I was, I was around a thousand or two thousand at the time, and uh, he was just like, "Hey, do you have any advice or tips on how to make our channel grow?" And I, gave, I, I answered him, and I gave him my best approximations. And about a week later, you guys had ten thousand subscribers, and I was like, "Well, either it worked or didn't matter at all." How the turn has <laughs> Honestly, tabled. <laughs> you, you, and uh, Volgan helping us out was also super encouraging. Like, we were, like, sh little shrimp dicks, and you guys were, like, helping us out anyway. Like, no questions asked. 
like you know Vogan made some of our graphic work he made our foundation uh banner um you know and like sim you were obviously helping us out with like kind of algorithm shit and all that mm. you know yeah never forget as much as i possibly could i was like i don't understand I, whenever we're talking about the algorithm I'm like nobody understands it but here's what i think i understand pretty much everyone that i know that is a youtuber i offer to help them with graphics um because it, it you're like it, the the mother Teresa. well, well like it, it because it's something <laughs> it's something that i that i worked as like as a freelance designer because i love it and I couldn't make a living out of it. So now that I'm making a living out of YouTube, I can kind of do it without worrying about getting paid for it because I have YouTube. So it's the best of both worlds. But just like having that, like in investing your time in someone without seeing any like no like immediate payback is like it's like I don't know, I, I really appreciate that shit because it's so hard to find. You know, it's like a, a genuine favor. Well, I mean, um, I as, as long as do it all as long as someone is creating cool stuff i i don't really care about getting getting paid back in any way you know it's like the, the thing yeah, with clay as well it's not about the yeah, payback. Like, it's, it's nice when about it comes down to it whenever i see this kind of thing it, it you get you get a lot of people coming up to you asking you know hey can you help us out hey can you help us out if i can see that you've done something like you actually have because there's a lot of people who are about to do something or they're planning on doing mm, something yeah. once you have something concrete that i can look at i'm gonna go well, you know, this is something you're you're serious about this, and you deserve my attention. That's the point where I'm like, yes, absolutely. You need help. What do you need? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, like that spirit is like. I feel like that's. I, I definitely get that sense from the creator community, and I feel like you know, like I want to help pay it forward too. So like, now I'll just do free voice acting or whatever for like smaller games that are like already have something off the ground, and mm -hmm. they're trying to like polish things and stuff. Yeah. And by the way, if, if you're well, listening to this you know, and you're you thinking that. of reaching out to any one of us or or not necessarily us, another content creator, my advice would be would be to have something to show them instead of just saying, I plan on creating this, you know, can you give me a shout out or can you give me any advice? Have something first. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be amazing just so long as you're you're committed in some way. I think that's really important to me because yeah, anyway. it's it, you know because that's much yeah because it's much rarer to actually find someone who has committed the time and effort to creating something than the amount of people yeah. who do say I just because I, you it's so easy to think about doing something that's the mm -hmm. easiest thing. Well, yeah, a good point is um when me and Jake were first starting out, all we had was a trailer, um and we sent it. I don't remember to who we, we sent it to a wiki staff being like, hey, could you like shout this out? And he's like sorry you know this looks really cool but we've received so many like trailers and stuff that go nowhere that like no yeah that's that's <laughs> so true it wasn't yeah. until like we had our first real episode yeah so even a trailer is like you know i like really have a, a finished product product mm -hmm. product project mm -hmm. i'm saying product um before you really start trying to you know wrangle other people in yeah because it's about time like it's it's about our time we don't have the time to help out everyone who asks but if you have because it's so rare to find someone who actually has created a thing then those people you can be like yes absolutely because we all want to help we just don't have the time and or energy to do so for everybody that asks yeah so we gotta have it, some it, sort it's of actually funny you should mention that like about that, minimum. that trailer i've seen so many of those you know it's like a, a 50 second to one minute video with you know static and then yeah. a date you know coming soon I've seen so many of yes. those videos and you know uh, like I agree yeah. with whoever said that on the SCP wiki there's so many of those teaser videos that go nowhere <laughs> yeah. it's funny because he sounds so tired he's like not again <laughs> oh god you know, not another I'm one. getting too long for this yeah. like how often I see how often you see someone saying they're thinking about making a video game <laughs> I'm like yeah mm -mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. well, well technically I I'm like thinking about it right videos. now but it's never gonna happen <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, there's so many game devs. That's the nice thing is like, like me and Jake have been considering down the road, potentially getting into. Uh, oh, okay. Jake, Jake's just muted because yeah, apparently there's some noise um, outside his room. But yeah, no, I um, I created a game for the SCP Wiki. That's SCP two four five. So at least I've actually done one, <laughs> and so, and I understand how much work has to go into it. And I'm like, I constantly think about doing another one, but who knows if I ever actually will get around to it. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, like Jake has a cool video game idea, so it's like definitely down the road we want to 
if we can, why not?、Mm. So,、uh, but obviously, we're focused one thing at a time.、Yeah. You know, who knows? Like、yeah. my dream is just to be more of like a Renaissance man. Like I'm not just film. I mean, like, I, I suppose do, the I end game for your kind of content would be if you could hire, you know, a bunch of editors and DPs and all that kind of stuff to to take care of all the other stuff for you. And then yeah, like the dream is like that can be a machine. Yeah. That like runs on its own, and then me and Jeff, are, fuck Jeff, <laughs> are there just to, like, my name is Jeff. Right, <laughs> I don't Jake's trigger and shit. <laughs>、uh, no, just to like write and direct, and like then all the technical shit we can kind of pass off and oversee.、Um, and then, I mean, the dream is like we can get a kick, like kind of what Clay did, where we have we already have some ideas, haha. But、um, <laughs> of like a kickstarted short film.、Uh, That's like a high quality SCP、uh, short film. Yeah.、Um, so maybe maybe once we hit 100k, we might announce something. <laughs> yeah, I think. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Clay Clay has、um, a slight advantage over most people because I think his job involves filmmaking on on、yeah. some. Yeah. Like he's he's been a professional filmmaker for years. Yeah.、So. <laughs> yeah. We're me. We're we're just getting into that scene. Me. Well, yeah. I mean, you graduated how long ago? Was it、so、a couple of years、advantage. ago? Or last May? Oh, <laughs> okay. So it's very rec- very recent.、So、yeah. I'm, I'm you guys are you guys are still fresh. You guys are still kids. Is is what I'm understanding here. Little little bunions. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm starting to get editing work now, and then I'm I you know for people who are interested, I we make like no personal money from the YouTube channel. Like, how I make money is, I like do videography work for this like. Green energy and、uh, engineering company、uh, lately. Yeah, you、so. guys reinvest, right? Like you take any money you make and、oh, put、yeah. it back into making more content. We're we're not even close to the level where we can start taking money out. Yeah.、Um, we're starting to brainstorm ideas of like how can we, you know, other ways to make money. But oh yeah, wait, Jeff's that's back it right now. Yeah, it's me,、uh, Jeff. <laughs> Whoops! Look, I have too many friends with J names. You have、so. a J name too, you fool. <laughs> I don't talk to. Hey, it was the, it was like the J five back in high school. Just、uh, yeah, was it five? Was four. four. It was me, you, four. Jeff, and John. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the pesky pesky lawnmower is back. Damn, <laughs> fucking lawn. I couldn't tell if、I、that was、you. me. I couldn't tell if that was. I had to take off my headphones and be like, "Wait, is that outside?" Ah, <laughs>、uh, yeah. No, literally, last time we were filming,、uh, just out of nowhere, landscapers come. Like shit. <laughs> Dumb.、Uh, so yeah. So,、um, as far as、uh, the next、oh, episode、fuck. goes, what I think、uh, exploring the series is going to be the guest, right? Oh my god! Wait, no, sorry. So, 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 that just Jake made a very good point. Landscapers have always been the plague of like our films. Like literally, we've had so <laughs> many films where they literally have walked in on set and been like, "What the fuck?" and then just left.、Um, oh man! But anyway, you were saying. Oh yeah. Um. Just for for the next episode, I think exploring the series is going to be. The guest on the next episode, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. So that should be cool. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be fun.、Um, and then,、um, do we want to get into the whole what we have planned to do at every end of? Yeah, maybe we、podcast? should actually. I was gonna say it's been it's been an hour and a half. Let's talk about what the podcast is actually gonna be about. So basically, what we have in mind is like at the end of every single podcast, we're gonna share、um, like a not as popular SCP, and then for the next podcast. We can at the end discuss the reading of the week or reading of the month.、Um, we haven't decided how often we're going to do these things. Yeah, but,、uh, I think we should probably do it at yeah, least once a- an episode, but because it's pretty easy. This one's going to be SCP three four five four: The Land Deniers of Tall Bees by TL three 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 S. And、uh, yeah, we'll just we would if we'll you want to link in the description. Yeah, there's going to be a link in the description. But if you want to be involved in basically. The conversation and understand what's going on. You should probably read it. It's not very long. It's、uh, actually quite short, so、uh, it's not going to be very difficult for you to read it, kind of comprehend what's going on, and then we're going to talk about it near the end of the next episode. Hey, I can、yeah. read that. Oh yeah.、Wow. <laughs> okay. So yeah. So the、uh, landscaper got louder. Sorry, Jake.、Um, yeah. I guess let's, let's wrap this baby up. Tune in next week. Uh, we'll have exploring series. Not next week. Fuck, I don't know. Tune in next time we upload. We'll have exploring. Next time we upload. Th- th- this is、uh, very much a, a work in progress.、Um, I've never really done a podcast like this. I don't know about you guys, but、um, I'm just kind of learning as、no, I go along. Yeah. yeah. 
I have, but at the same time, it's going to be a learning uh, process because the am- I, I, I don't know that everyone understands the amount of work or creative energy that goes into it in a particular way. It's easy to think of it in the abstract, but we'll get to it. And we're going to have a, I would imagine we're going to get around to having a regularly scheduled podcast. It might be once a month, but we're going to get to the point where we have a regular schedule for you, uh, viewers, listeners, whatever you want to yeah, call it. We'll try. Yeah. We're not there yet, but uh, we will get there. I mean, definitely help us learn. Leave comments. Let us know, like, if you want me to shut the fuck up or, you know, <laughs> someone's talking too long. There we go. Let the anxiety like come that. through. Oh, can we can we do those suggestions now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. No, this this is actually a good. Let's let's actually do like active like criticism of each other. So um, <laughs> this, this part of the podcast is called the Thunderdome. This is where we brutally attack each other, insult <laughs> what, each other's what content. Problems? <laughs> so, yeah, Jake, what are your biggest problems? Shortest podcast. Alert. Jake, what is he? Jake? What are your biggest problems with uh, my YouTube content? Cynical. Fuck you. There we Ooh. go. See you next. Uh, see, see everybody next time. <laughs> I thought I was ready, but I wasn't. Ha, 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 ha.